course, in the upper right in the gold. We just saw him, but we want to see more of him. Because that's just how this works. He is Gumiho. In the bottom left, his opponent, the Blue Zerg, one of the most decorated uh, players in StarCraft II history. This is Sue. And Rushy, imagine a world where silver, silver was worth more than gold. You know what? Like, I the memes aside, I if I had the opportunity to win second place at all of these premier events as many times as he has, I'd take it. I know it's like not as good as gold, but to say like I was the second best at this event and at this event and at this event and at this event, and then finally, finally, after years of being subjected to silver, finally getting the chance to say, you know what? I can be the best for one time. Like it, it, it hurts a little bit on the inside, but I'm sure Sue st will still look back on his career and be happy. Oh no, it's, it's uh, before Mario won four in a row, uh, won four GSLs in a row. I was very willing to say, and you know, before Cyril did his dominant thing, I was very willing to say, yes, yeah, Sue's the, the greatest ever to it. Yeah, he never was able to go through and, and, and win a GSL, although, Winning Katowice was like, made up for that, I think, in a decent and amount. That's a pretty good, pretty good exchange. Yeah, it wasn't when the GSL was the official world championship. So, well, I guess it was always the world championship, but it wasn't when it was the, uh, you know, the WCS equivalent yeah, yeah, world yeah. championship. Um, yeah, but even still. it was still its own thing. And uh, that game five versus Sarah was probably the best ZV, individual map of ZVs I've ever seen. So, you know what? It was great. But anyway, Reaper here. Uh, yeah, we got to point out, Sue has gone for a four link opening, not a six. It means he's kind of okay. Weirdly enough, he's it's okay he's losing. With, uh, he's okay with losing one. Now, if you go six, you really don't want to do that because, of course, then you've committed the extra drone to a uh, fight instead. But for right now, Lings are going to stay alive. Gumio not really finding the pressure he's looking for. And third base going up. So that's all we got to say about that one. Game goes to pace. All right. I kind of like seeing how people expand on data C. There's like, there, I mean, there's always like two options, right? I mean, there's usually two options to take your third base. Uh, data C is such a like weirdly shaped map that the the third base here that Sue has taken has kind of those weird ramps, but maybe a little bit more uh, protective value going into your natural. If you go to that third base on the bottom side, it's a little bit more protected, but a little bit further away from your natural. There's just kind of some interesting, ah, I love that logo. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's just a, a lot of different options, and I and I think it'll be interesting to see how Sue can develop this third base location on Data C, especially since we're not really 100% sure what direction he wants to go. It hasn't really shown a lot of tech. He did pull off of gas, so he's only got one gas worker in the main right now, so mostly uh, investing into queen and drone production. But uh, if he decides to go for something a little bit more mobile, like uh, Mutiling Bane, uh, this map can be really, really uh, advantageous with the base that he did take because it should be a little bit easier for him to protect especially with that large flowing uh multifaceted army yeah the, the story with this map really rush is how can you set yourself up for tank pushes because you know on the bottom side that's a really scary tank spot it's a little bit uh, a little bit harder to defend uh from those really early tank pushes. you want to get creep well, just a little bit farther but for now you're right we haven't seen too much from Sue. It looks, in fact, he, he was a little supply block, so he canceled our gas just to get that little extra drone out. Uh, but of course, we talk about whether we see uh, see tech or don't see tech. Really, it is just a, a game of Sue's going to sit in, in mineral income as long as he can, tech up as late as possible, and go from there. So really, the question instead we, we should be asking ourselves is, what is going to come out of the maw of Gumio? For right now, that's a lot of Hellions on the map. We got a Pult Viking on the north side. And importantly enough, there of course Tech Lab going on this starport, which means I gotta assume this is just get, yeah, that's just gonna be for the factory because uh you don't build banshees this late in time. But with the Marines getting dropped in, do we have an armory? No, we don't. So this is this is interesting. You have these four Marines in the drop with the Hellions. Normally this would be some sort of, of hellbat timing, but it's not. It's just a macro opener. Gumi was already on his three bases. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that could get Sue to really respond in a different way here. And, and it seems like that he's 
taking this in stride. I mean, he's putting nine drones down, so it's not overreacting, not building a whole bunch of army that's not going to be super effective trying to get across the map. But he does still have to dance with these uh, Hellions that are going to swing in on the right-hand side. Checking for that fourth base timing. It's not down just yet. The queen positioning for Sue, though, very, very strong and doing a nice job of rotating. But I love the use of these Marines here. Oh, great transfuses here to keep that Overlord alive, but that's going to force an engagement up at that third base location. But Sue with really, really solid queen positioning right now, doing a nice job of preventing damage from these Marines while also deflecting away the Hellions. Yeah, this defense has been superb from... I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> but it really, it has been an excellent defense from Sue in this setup. Yeah, a couple Overlords went down. I think uh, three Overlords in total, which is always annoying for the Zerg. You're you have a uh, zerg builds are not as as strict as as the other races um it's just because of how larva scaling works uh, but the overlord timings are the ones uh, are the probably the, the strictest parts of that build so losing three overlords early it's annoying it really does slow you down a little bit but Sui's gonna be able to weather that storm and now uh bailing speed is gonna of course gonna be the first set of upgrades on the way i don't even think we have evo chambers just yet and you talked about it rushy it's gonna be spire play from sue in this game this is the style that has won him so many second places and uh well we're gonna have to see how gumiho reacts in this game is he is going greedy already a fourth base on the way well, and, and I think Sue needs to start recognizing what's going on here. Take a look at Sue's vision. He has not been to the opposite side of the map. He doesn't even know it's over there. So he doesn't know there's a third base. He doesn't know there's a fourth base on the way. I mean, he can make some assumptions here since it's just been Hellion uh, harassment, that it's just a pretty standard macro, especially since no Banshees, or not, no Banshees, uh, no battle cruisers have jumped across the map. But I mean, he needs to start getting a grip on this. Those eight Mutas are going to be useful here. And now he does finally dip up. He does see those Hellbats morphing in does get a tiny glimpse of that fourth base command center but now sue's got to do something about it uh upgrade just going down right now I, I mean sue is going to take this a little bit slower but i don't think he can afford too much longer i wonder whether sue's gonna get the read that maybe seeing those hellbats morphing as he shows up in the third and i don't think he's seen very many marines in this game and certainly no stim whether he's gonna suddenly get the read that this is mech play because it's not it's bio and you got to play that very differently indeed but now the mutas will run forward one meter falls for really just about no gain this push coming down to Sor sue's fourth base is is a bit of a problem not the least of or fifth base i guess but not the least of which because the creep spread is just really not there so there we go sue cancels that immediately he is on the north side will of course deal with the banshee that is there but really i'm worried about this one one push coming in from gumio supplies are relatively equal and yes it is a four base zerg but the upgrades that's the big story it's one one versus zero zero bailey's now looking to roll in get decent connections not the best to start and this one widow mine these two widow mines anchoring things behind as the creep spread is there making it harder and harder for sue to take the fight but good splits there now one widow mine will fall and it looks like gumio says you know what i i denied your fifth that's all i could do right now i i don't really feel comfortable doing this so he will back up take that fourth base but it's a four base zerg versus a four base Terran right now yeah, getting that fourth base down is really crucial for Gumiho. That will give him a giant leap forward here in his economy. And we can already see the benefits here. I mean, 171 to 165 at, at, at any point when the Terran player can keep a, a consistent supply advantage over their Zerg opponent. I mean, that's going to be a really, really big advantage here. And now Gumiho is even going to get a chance to get this all set up. He's got Widow Mines in a couple of different locations. These Mutas have been really, really passive. I mean, those Mutas are best used when they are able to get in and out of mineral lines, start harassing turrets to force an engagement, uh, units to pull from different locations. And it just seems like Sue is playing very, very cautiously here. It, it, for some reason, he is very concerned that he doesn't want to just toss away different parts of his army or take a bad engagement. But in re the reality, I mean, he's kind of taking a bad engagement by taking no engagement at all. Yeah, it feels like, and so in part of this was, of course, is a hailing trade for single brain. Good job there. Uh, Sue felt like he had to go and not get as many mutas as he would like because that push had, that Gumio put on the bottom side. So it was only 13 mutas. There was only eight mutas for a little bit. Now he's at a healthier number. But even then, uh, Russia, eight mutas can absolutely cause problems on a mineral line. Uh, but of course, data see if you take this fourth base, it's kind of hard to worm your way through there. As now we will see the Ling is looking to take an engagement. But no, they back up. The splits there, just two prepared for Gumio at the moment. And this is 2-2 versus 1-1. There has not been a single moment in this game where upgrades have been equal since the early game. Now the Lings, they're going to run forward, though. Gumio off creep. Widowmine shots are going to be fantastic, and he will be able to hold this fight forward. Yes, Mutas are good. 
but you want to be able to knock down the marine cannon to the point where they can actually take the fight if you're going for this battle muta style and unfortunately for sue that fight not quite good enough just yet we still have 17 mute or 17 banelings on the field but uh, he needs a little more i feel like yeah, there's got to be reinforcements. There's got to be lings to soak up uh, marine fire here for these banelings to get some work done. Now, Kumio is a decent amount on creep here, so that is going to force Sue into an engagement. A Thor does come in to deal some air damage. They are going to start targeting down these mutas, but some decent splits here by Sue to try and keep these alive as, big, as much as possible. Good lift up by Kumiho as he does uh, take a step back off of creep once again. He's going to scan forward to see that that army did get into full retreat, and mine's now going to start providing some additional support and really starting to cut Sue off from this attack path. He just can't afford to engage these Widow Mines unless he's got really good vision here because one Widow Mine can absolutely decimate this ground force. Yes, uh, they can very much. I, I, I'll, I'll do one better, Rushy. They can do more than kill one in 10. They probably can do even more than that. But 21 Banelings are on the way. And here's the big timing. 2-2 two, two is just about done. Sue's been able to buy himself a bit more of a window or more importantly, Gumiho, by slowing down his upgrades, has been able to build Sue a window where Sue will be able to take the fight even, maxed out. And that is exactly what he's going to be looking for now. As Muta's on the north side, they knock down a couple Marines. Just any trades they can find is great as long as they don't really lose too much. There's a couple Queens all on the bottom side. Four total Queens have died this game. But Gumiho, he's already on five bases. He's got a sixth base on the way, or at least a sixth command center on the way. More and more Thor is getting added in. But this is the timing that Sue is looking for. Lings run forward, looking to drain off some of those Widowmine shots before the fight happens in earnest. Good drag there. And the Banelings, they come rolling on forward. But even still, there's just not enough. A Thor will fall. The army of Gumio, though, it still stands strong, and it was not enough to break this out. So now Gumio runs forward, knocks down yet more Creep Rushy. And now he's about one screen away from the core bases of Sue. Yeah, and in a moment here, 3-3 three, three is going to pop, and that's going to make this uh, bio army even stronger than it already was. 3-3 three, three now completed here. Kumiho is going to be able to push that forward, and Sue needs to start recognizing that this army, despite being small, is now going to hit just a little bit harder. Trying to set up a little bit of a surround here, maybe pulling some banelings on the bottom side, but he's just going to rotate up and down. Here go the mutas, though, into the fifth base location, and there's not a whole lot there to stop that many mutas. That's going to force an engagement here by Gumiho at that fourth base location. And he's going to get overwhelmed. He's going to have to pick up and run back, at least for right now. Reinforcements is going to try and keep things alive here. But I don't think the Planetary Fortress is going to get the same fate. No, more importantly, Sue took the fight as Gumiho was distracted. So those mutas, they are undealt with. That is a dead fifth base for the Terran right now. And he took such a mess. horrendous disastrous fight outside of Sue's fourth and yeah maybe this fourth even goes down but it only has five mineral patches remaining it's more for production than anything else more and more banelings are morphing three three on the way not there just yet so it looks like Sue for the time being he says look I built myself an economic lead I just need to sustain it here as the game goes on the banelings run forward but it's just all marauder Thor which hey you know what if you knock the Thor down the meters are very happy about that one and there we go the Thor is dead there's nothing to shoot these meters down anymore Widowmine sure maybe but the Ling's softening that one up Widowmine shot gets another set of mutas right there now the mutas get they get very low but the, <laughs> they're not many marines anymore either but sue forced back just a little bit down about 20 supply down to upgrades but he still has his five his six bases his economy is going full steam ahead and gumio that cannot be said for him yeah, Gumiho had a big setback there. Losing that planetary was a was it not a critical loss, but it is a pretty strong loss. He's going to have to take some time to reestablish that base once again, and he is not really mineral rich right now, and that's not money that he wants to invest. He wants to invest into this army push, but Sue now has upgrades. Adrenal glands completed. Plus three is about two-thirds of the way done, and this is going to be a very scary army. He does get the base there down on the bottom left-hand side. Banelings come rolling on in and start connecting with very very squishy bio there's just not that much here to deal with all of these mutas these mutas have been very efficient sue doing a nice job keeping that flock alive and despite losing that base sue still sitting very very confidently here 162 to 129 i think he's at a position where he could grab these 42 lings that are on the way right now beomolf and he could just push across the map yeah, the name of the NO, man, that's going to time out so well for Sue, too. His 3-3 is just about done. So the name of the game, really, for the, for the last couple minutes, has been survive until I get my hive upgrades. And he's doing that by knocking a base down, by taking some pretty good fights. But he was never going to trade cost-effectively uh, against the 3-3 versus 2-2 setup. I mean, that's just how this matchup works. 
I don't know, maybe maybe if you're pulling miracles, but generally you gotta be very careful. There's Widow Mine. Okay, he's aware of it. He's okay, he's okay. Um but yeah, three three is now done. Sue, he's he actually for a brief moment he had an army supply lead. And well, how does Gumiho defend this next push? There really there's not a lot going for him here. Yeah, this is, this is going to be difficult because he really needs to hole up at this fifth base location. It's one of his best mining bases right now. He needs to keep it alive. And that's exactly where Sue has his eyes set. He is going to start rotating this bio force up here and try to catch these units in the intermediate. Baitlets come rolling on in and are starting to find some decent targets here. But what are the mutas attacking? They're kind of going under the high ground here where there are turrets and there is going to be additional damage taken care of. Not quite the engagement there that Sue was hoping for. He was hoping to get a little bit of economic damage with these banelings as well but gumiho weathers that first engagement here and actually pushes sue all the way back onto his own creep 46 more lings on the way a base going in the top left hand corner but i mean sue does have to find some additional damage here if he wants to get this secured if he lets gumiho stay uh into that fifth and fourth base for too long that's gonna start catching up with him that it will but the mute is on the north side now looking for a little bit more uh, there's not a lot for them to find honestly the the fourth base of gumiho is almost mind out only four mineral patches remain so uh as much as we talk about okay well so you know sue's expanding elsewhere there really is only one true inflection point in this game this is the bottom right side base sugumio he can attack through there and he can defend it at the same time but now the thor's there dropped off banelings look to run forward he actually gets some decent connections on the marines to start but gumio splits backward well enough runs forward and it's all a bit of it's more of a counterattack game from sue at this point the mutas Halfway to plus three, they're knocking down any sorts of reinforcements that Gumio may choose to make, knocking down some factories as well. So now as Sue gives the bottom side base up, you get the sense that he doesn't really care about it. Yeah, the creep spread is important, especially considering Gumio wants to take the rich gas base, but these mutas on the other side, they're just doing so gosh darn much rushing. Yeah, this has been really, really good damage here by Sue. He's done a, a very good job of trying to keep these mutas engaged here at the uh, back half of this game. And to your point, yeah, that southern base, I think Sue's kind of giving up on that bottom right. I mean, he's got 35 workers up at the top uh, left-hand corner. It said 35 at one point. Maybe he pulled a few off. 25 still, a large number. But the nice part here for Sue is that it's so far away from Gumiho's army that he doesn't have to prepare for it. But here comes another push. He wants to push uh, Gumiho off of this base the base is going to lift up here come reinforcements here on the left hand side that thor getting very very low here it has 11 kills so far and i can only imagine those are a lot of valuable muta kills and gumiho now can shove this base down once again that he can but also you know he was forced to drop mining for just a little bit but unfortunately for, for sue he was never really able to find his way into the mineral line to really knock down that economy but of course also Ugh. we're at the point is that oh big shot on the wooden muters it looks like we're at that point actually you know as i say that's only four orbitals so not at the point where it's like okay well you can just mule for forever it doesn't really matter how many scvs you lose but every time gumiho establishes another base it feels really bad for sue resources lost of course will never be in his favor he's 10k down but as long as he's maybe able to say, yeah, Gumio, you only get five bases. You don't get that six. Maybe that, you know, that that's his win condition. So uh, Gumio getting this extra base is a significant problem. Yeah, and, and I guess one downside to that hatchery in the top left-hand corner, I mean, any larva that comes out of that is going to be very, very far away from the battle. So it's going to take extra time for some of those uh, important units to rally here. What do we have for the mute account here? 24. I mean, Sue's then really, really uh, investing into his mute account. He has lost a uh, few over the course of this game, 22 in total, and he has done a good job of replenishing that amount as well. But it seems like Gumiho is going to try and take that last tech switch here going up into his ghost academy trying to get some additional units this would be a big pickoff here if this orbital command does get picked off especially by mutas it's going to get repaired just in the last second bail mode right at the nick of time yeah that i mean on the one hand you got to make sure you do that you don't want to lose mutas there they are such a key component of your army at this point but also man <laughs> some part of me says oh man great drag there on top of the on the widow mines but part of me just says oh man what if he did anyways mutas now are going to find their way into the natural position this door just gets shredded plus three mutas 24 of them uh that's a lot so now into the natural they will go into the main base they will go looking to camp the terran production is mainly on the bottom side they get a decent trade but really it is all about the, uh, the production here mutas they find their way on top of everything banelings as well they make it so hard for gumio to find his way back into his own main base but now as the banelings they run forward and marauders are well uh, they don't really die to mutas to banelings all that easily so mutas they will be forced out eventually forced back home 
but not tail between their legs. Just forced to rearm a little bit because they got so much there. Now this planetary pretty much undefended. Gumi, who we are now, we're starting to see him really start to take that economic damage that he we've been looking for if you are a Sioux fan. Only 41 workers remain. The planetary looks like it will just go down. And now, well, you talk about how it's so important that Gumiho or that Sioux does not allow Gumiho the extra base. Well, one of those bases, it's dead. It is now effectively back to a one base Terran. Yeah, this was a very, very good uh, position here by Sue. He capitalizing on the fact that he pulls a, a majority of Gumiho's army into the main, and then they just can to get back in time to defend some of these uh, bottom corner bases. That command center just on the north side of a burning, so that's not going to be in a major uh, trouble here for now. And Sue is maxed out once again. He is down on the army count. Gumiho's army is very, very strong here, 137 to 111 but that just means that Sue needs to be very careful in these engagements. Gumiho is, oh, there he does finally go back after that base in the bottom right-hand corner. Gumiho's got to be careful here. He's one engagement away from falling in game number one, but having the Ghost as a part of this is going to be uh, critical. Does he have Ghost in this forward army? I don't think he does. Big stim to try and get up the ramp here, but that's a lot of bailings that are going to connect with so many units here. Gumiho plummets in supply 132 136 but he still maintains a slight army advantage here it's important to note that yeah ghosts are good but against Ling Bane army maybe not as much that being said this Thor is so low 19 kills 20 kills to its name and it, they will knock down another base but Gumiho he has not been he doesn't matter whether he's been winning the army fights because Sue has been winning the counter-attack game over the last 10 minutes the mutas they find their way in again it's a 30 worker economy for Gumiho so all Sue has to do really is just take he doesn't even have to be positive trades. He just has to keep taking trades, keep knocking this army of Gumiho down because eventually Gumiho will not be able to reinforce it. SCV is pulled in this army just to try to maximize any little bit of something here. And it looks like Sue will give this base up. Well, actually, no, he's not. He's going to try to take the fight once again. But these battle mutas, these 3 2 mutas dominating the skies. There's just not enough Marines for this to happen anymore. There is nothing anymore. Sue plays a masterclass of a game on Data C and he takes game. Number one, with style, with pizzazz. One might even say, Rushy, it was a superb game. I, I like your use of battle muta. I, I, that, that's sticking with me right now. I do, I do enjoy that very, very much. Actually, I'm curious now. We, we, we talked about, okay, well, you know, Envy is disbanding. Uh, Kwangdong needs a new ace as Trap is going to the military. Mm, and of course, yeah, actually, that, that's something we got to point out here. There is no trap and there is no rogue in these GSO qualifiers because military is too close to them. Clo oh. Too close for them. So uh, we will not have a G. I was kind of worried that rogue would spoil our, our Terran G5L. I was kind of worried about it. I, I mean, wouldn't that wouldn't that have been wild, though, for both of them to make it to the season three grand finals? And then it, and then it has to happen. Like yeah. there, there's no G5L curse. Like it has to happen at that point. Yeah, you know, I was kind of hoping for that, honestly. But um, I was it, it kind of felt like last season was going to be Maru's one and only shot with how Rogue will win a G Assault and then be really terrible for a season to come back and win another. <laughs> but um, now that he's gone for the next 18 months, I mean, Maru, you got about four more GSLs. Assuming GSL happens next year, you got about four more GSLs to make it happen before Rogue comes back and secures. So, um, I, but it would be wrong. Like, as, as much as I like Hero, for example, oh, who only has one GSL, of course. Uh, or anyone else, it would feel wrong to see someone who's not a Terran take the G5L, just considering who it was made for in the first place. That's 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 fair. I, but can we give like can we double back to Hero for a moment as this uh, this Reaper harasses uh, the? Oh, actually, you know that's Ooh. actually gonna take out a got a zergling there and could possibly get number ah. two as well oh, oh, they both get very very low gumiho's gonna dive back in there though queen's gonna pop out that reaper's a little bit far forward it is gonna get out just at the end though can we give hero just a little bit of love because his winner's interview was absolutely killer and hilarious i'm gonna keep winning so my wife won't be bored I love that. We love a man who fights for the better half of his life. Or it wasn't even that. It wasn't so my wife won't be bored. Is I'm gonna keep winning so my life will be bored, so she doesn't, so she doesn't uh, react strongly emotionally to me winning big tournaments because it's just so oh. blasé. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yes, that is correct. Thank and, you for correcting me there. Uh, but it's also, it's still important. funny. <laughs> 
still very good. I, I just, ah, it, it was also very cool. I mean, I know that the uh, th that Protoss players are a bit in shambles because now they won't have any way to complain because the Protoss players won the main premiere event. Pretty awesome, pre feeling pretty good. But then uh, that does create some opening and opportunity for season three, especially since you already said uh, a couple of perennials out of the equation. We got room for more. That we do, and well, maybe one of those players is going to be the, the gold of Terran here as the Hellions in the natural. Well, it looks like they were, how much did they get? Uh, four drones, actually. Not bad from just a little bit of early aggression. Not bad at all. What's the exchange rate there, Beowulf? Uh, how many how many drones is acceptable for one Hellion loss? Um, Four is certainly good. <laughs> I don't know that there's a, well, okay, if you get... If you only get two drones for Hellion, it's not worth it. But if you get three, it's worth it. Because, of course, it, it varies by game state. But, uh, it's fair, fair. Gumhyo going in, forcing the drone pull, killing off four workers. Yeah, you'll. it's absolutely worthwhile. Uh, the interesting thing, of course, he's not really continuing his Hellion production beyond the the four that he made. He is, of course, going for... Is that a... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So he's, he's moving into this TY211 style, which is actually... This build that he's doing on Moondance, I guess he just thinks it's good on this map uh, because this is something he used rather recently in an EPT Korea Finals to shred Scarlet. Uh, because the 2 one that drop-heavy style, is so good when the Zerg says, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the pocket base. It, good luck defending that one. There's so much dead airspace, it's really hard to deal with that. Uh, but in this game, Sue has taken the much more defensible, the much more... Uh, uh, the much more standard uh, triangular third base position. Even still, though, Kumio, by getting a couple workers, eh, messing with the larva economy just a little bit. Uh, Rushy, we're going to have to see how much he gets done here. I like how we, the, the forward base is considered the defensive option. And, right? and I like 100% agree with you uh, because I, I did, personally, as a Zerg, I, I hate that back pocket. I, I just think there's uh, way too much uh, room for shenanigans, not to mention this particular back pocket. It's only got one gas. It has less minerals. It's actually not as big of an investment, especially for Zerg. And it, it limits your creep spread. Your creep spread's going back. Now, forward, silly. You, you want to push that out. Uh, Gumiho is going to pick off uh, at least a little bit of pressure here on the right hand side oh jumps on top of the queens uh without any zergling support but some good transfuses keep those alive does get a cancel on that fourth base as well and here's kind of the example of what we were talking about there there's that dead airspace gumiho now going to try and live in that dead airspace and he goes back here to ha jump on a base that just isn't there i see what you did there rushy living in dead airspace wow what what a poet the the the, the poet of our starcraft generation <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. I, I do my best. Do not forget our esports stream. Or something. <laughs> Oh, good scan. We'll see uh, some of the creep at that third base. And I think if Gumiho is like really paying attention, he's going to notice that creep's going off to the left hand side. So we can start making some inferences that that fourth base might be headed in that direction. So he can start making some pressure there. But uh, this is a decent amount of aggression. Oh, those queens actually finding the reinforcements on the right hand side do soften up those medevacs. So that is going to be helpful here for Sue as this engagement. Hellbat's going to morph in as well. Marine starting to work on those banelings, and they do pick off quite a few but that is not going to stop the bailings from connecting with all of those hellbats suddenly half of the supply in hellbat is gone and those are going to be pushed back by the remaining queens here that have plenty of transfuse energy i looked at that fight i looked at that or the, the setup there from gumio and i said okay this is a terrifying composition from the gold terran and then it suits kill it kills it and it's like okay well uh, maybe not as scary as i thought but now i mean that's just the benefit of the nine queen style that rainer showed us like had a pizza what was it a year ago two years ago and i mean we do still see and it is it is very much something that fits sue's peter pan zerg style and now of course one one is done for gumio now uh one one not quite done for sue at this point is we do expect him to move into most likely hydroling bane off of this that's kind of what you just do when you stay this ling heavy for this long and of course with no spire on the way that anyway yeah there we go hydrogen going down of course that's the five gas setup uh but we got to point out more than anything with how heavy the pressure has been from gumio of course with this 2-1-1 setup uh, the crease spread from from sue is pretty damn impressive 
Yeah, I, very, very well pushed out. It's not as far as it could be, but he's definitely got enough to be able to intercept paths, seeing uh, this harassment here come at the fifth base location. He is probably going to have to cancel that base out because he is dealing with the drop in the main, but that drop will get cleaned up and the medevac does get picked off as well. A nice grab here for Sue, limiting some of the harassment potential of his opponent, but does have to rebuild that fifth base. But I think all things considered, that's a fair trade. Oh, it absolutely is. Uh, he, he, not the least of which, of course, because he does have a fourth base. It's not like, oh, crap, I just lost my fourth base over and over and over again, because that's what kills the Zerg. The fifth base, when your opponent is, is still on three? Uh, okay, you got you got a little bit more time, especially if you're able to take some level of a positive trade. And now, oh, running for good Bailey connection there. What a mine from downtown. Really does not get all that much. Only, well, I guess 10 kills, but... Really, that's, uh, that's 10 links, so really not the end of the world. Uh, the big thing there, of course, is Gumiho is opening up this position where the creep is not. I try to open up pushing positions uh, later on. As, uh, we talked about the dead airspace position. This is going to be, I think, an instantaneously canceled. Uh, actually, this might even just get the kill because Gumiho is going to be able to jump on top of it immediately. But this base from Sue is not going to be able to last all that long. I would say, you know what, he's got five bases, but even still, um, uh, Gumiho? There we go. Okay. Go. Oh, yeah, does get that cancel. I don't think that's going to be a crucial base for him to get secured at this point. He's going to want it eventually, but that's definitely not a necessity to uh, keep this game rolling for Sue. Just a, an opportunity to keep things moving. Nice little harassment here in the center. Gumiho does have to pick up and move uh, away from that, but Sue now really getting that creep pushed out here. Once it starts getting into uh, this uh, little foggy uh, backward S, I guess you could call it a two, um, it starts to get really really uh, encroach on Gumiho's ability to set up different uh, positions here. He's going to get spotted by creep tumors by the time he's got uh, armies in position. He's going to have a more difficult time trying to position on uh, the side and trying to get some uh, payback runs. But uh, this is actually a really good spot here for Sui. He picks up all of those Widow Mines. They don't actually get to connect on any of the army. Those Hydralists now starting to come in play, but they are still waiting for upgrades right now to really be at their full effectiveness. Oh, those wood of mine. Oh, those banelings are going to get so much, though. Uh, Gumio was, I guess, not really paying attention. He ate, he ate some big shots. Almost all the Marines. They do fall down. And I, I do want to see, you talked about that position that yeah, Sue kind of took a good fight. I do want to see him knock these rocks down. That is a position that Gumio was likely to try to abuse as the game does go on. You can put tanks in the high ground. Uh, not that he has really a significant amount of tanks right now, but you can put tanks on the high ground. You can just sit in that choke position, make it rather hard for the Zerg to defend. But for right now, Sue really does have every base that he wants. Right, he's on six bases. Uh, maybe he's going to be able to take a bottom left and uh, some middle right. But for right now, pretty much he has the easy bases. His creep spread is set up well to defend. And now he feels comfortable going on the aggressive. So run by set up on the north side. And more importantly, on the south side at the same time, Widowmine, good split there. He loses a couple things, but really not all that much. And now here we go, the army running forward. But this is just a distraction. It is allowed by to buy time for the links to find their way into the third base here. And they're only going to get a couple STBs for the moment, Mains. it looks like. Oh, the Banelings are all going to connect with the Planetary Fortress and actually box all of these valuable units into the back of the base but as you said the ling run by at the third base location the absolute devastating damage that sue was going for and the fact that he got the base on the left hand side well that was just icing on the cake here as these uh hydralists are able to continue pushing forward they're always going to trade better against those marauders and sue knocks out gumiho in group a and advances onto code s